Hey guys, thanks for joining us again today for episode three. We're gonna take a couple minutes to talk about the best way to mic drums here, or in my opinion, the best way to mic drums here at CCU. And then also uh, a short snippet on how to mic guitar amplifiers. So here we go. All right, so we're gonna start first today with bass drums and the best way to mic bass drums. We're gonna go just with a simple setup. Um, there are a couple ways to do it here uh, using just the Shure SM91 by itself, so one input, or the Sennheiser dynamic bass drum mic and the PZM um, to double mic it. If you guys wanna learn how to double mic a bass drum well, come see me, I'll explain it to you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, today we're just gonna talk about how to mic it with a single mic because it gets an awesome sound and it's a lot easier to do. So, first up, here we have a uh, PDP 22 inch bass drum, pretty normal. Um, the other kit here I think has the same thing on it. Um, here is the Shure Beta 91A that we talked about in the differences in mics and types of mics uh, video we did not too long ago. Um, so this is a condenser microphone. What's great about this is your ability to put it inside of the bass drum to get a good mix of the click um, from the beater um, and the thump of the overall drum. So um, something to be aware of is that click, um, if you're trying to find that on an EQ, is gonna be around 3,000 hertz, and the thump of the drum is gonna be around 80 hertz. Um, and one thing that I like to do with this mic specifically is scoop out a bit of 500 hertz. That gives it a very modern kind of sound. Um, one thing you can do is on the back of this, you will find a little dip switch that says EQ. And Towards the upside, it is flat. Towards the bottom side, it has a slight dip in the lower frequencies. Um, I'm not actually even sure what it dips frequency-wise. I'd have to look up the spec chart. You might do that. Um, I almost always just keep it on the linear side because that allows me to do any tweaking to the EQ on the console itself. So as far as placement, um, if there is a porthole in the bass drum, it is definitely best to stick this inside the porthole towards the center of the drum. Um, this is the one we're gonna be micing the most often. There is a pillow to dampen some of the uh, overtones inside. You can set it directly on top of that pillow. Um, and you wanna do it like 60% towards the beater side. It gets the best sound in my opinion. Um, so if this is the length of the drum this way, if it's just like this, um, you wanna to go towards the middle, um, front to back, and then the middle horizontally. And then you wanna go just a touch more towards the beater side. That gives the best mix of both worlds. Um, so that's about it for bass drums. Um, moving on, we're gonna come over here to the far side of the kit to talk about the snare drum, so. All right guys, so now we're gonna take a couple seconds to talk about this side of the kit. Um, first up is the snare drum, super important part of it. Um, we're just gonna talk about using a single mic today. If you wanna talk about double miking it, come see me, we'll chat one on one. Um, you'll know this mic by name. Um, this is actually a 58 just with the windscreen popped off. Pretty much the same exact thing as a 57 commonly used on snare drums. There's not really any other mic to use here on a snare drum other than this bad boy. It takes super high SPL and uh, has an awesome frequency response for what you're trying to do with this. Um, the main thing that I try to achieve when placing this um, is to have it off axis of any overtones coming from the snare drum and any really harsh like splash um, high frequency nastiness that comes from cymbals, especially the hi-hats. The hi-hats being in such close proximity to the mic itself makes it a little difficult, um, but using placement is your, is your best bet for getting rid of most of that. So I like to place it underneath of the hi-hat here, if you can see, and two inches, about this much, just over the edge of the drum, probably two inches above the drum, and then the diaphragm just directly towards the center of it, and I want it legitimately just hard against the hats if I can. It being directly behind it, this being a cardioid mic, keeps it from picking up, well, as best as you can, keeps it from picking up any nastiness that'll come off the hats. Um, as far as equalization goes, I usually do a high pass around 80 hertz. Uh, 500 hertz is kind of the meat of the snare drum. 3,000 and 8,000 hertz is kind of that crisp and poppiness that comes from the snare drum, so be, be ready to adjust those some. And every now and then I'll grab a little bit of 250 and take it out if it's really thumpy. Moving on, we'll talk a little bit up about toms. We use the Sennheiser E604 microphone here. What's great about this boy is it clips to the side of most anything with a metal rim. So 
Again, you just want to place these to keep them off axis of any of the nastiness that could come from the symbols. I like doing it on the rack tom just right above here, like so. Um, I like keeping it extended as far as I can, as you can see, and then I just point the diaphragm right towards the center of the drum, and that, that is true for both um, the rack and the floor toms. Um, this is also a cardioid mic, so be, you know, be aware of that when placing it to keep the pickup range out of that of the cymbals. Um, as far as EQ on these guys, for rack tom, I definitely take the high pass up to about 80 hertz. I always scoop 500 out of these things. It gives like this really nice round uh, sound coming off of them. And then if I need to adjust the attack, the sound of the stick hitting it, I'll add somewhere between like 2 and 5k or if I need to get rid of that, I'll, I'll, I'll notch it some. So that's awesome. For the floor tom, don't notch that, or don't high pass that thing at all, man. Just let it, let it scream on the low end. That's what's awesome about it. So last but not least, we'll talk about overheads. And overheads are extremely important, and it took me a long time to really realize the difference overheads can make in a front of house mix, but especially in a recording. So we use the Sennheiser SM81 pencil condenser mics here. We talked a little bit about those. I always keep the um, pad on them at zero and keep the low cut on them linear so that I can adjust it up top to meet whatever my needs are. A lot of guys will throw the high pass on these pretty high, anywhere from like 200, even 500 hertz and above. I actually like the sound of snare drum and toms coming through these a little bit, so I, I really don't even take the high pass up much past 150 or 250 hertz sometimes, but that's your personal preference. Feel free to play around with it some. Uh, we use these in a stereo pair. So one on this side of the kit, one on this side of the kit using a boom mic, and I like keeping them just facing straight down. Um, basically, I use the uh, stage left one to pick up um, cymbals, hats, and then a little bit of the snare drum and the rack tom. And then the one on the other side is mostly the ride. If they have another crash, the other one, and the floor tom. Um, definitely panning them hard. And I really don't touch the EQ at all. What's great about these SM81s is they have an awesome frequency response for, for the kit. And it's nice just not to mess around with them much. So um, that pretty much is an overview of how I like to mic drum sets. If you guys have any specific questions about this, feel free to drop me a line. Now we're going to take a second to talk about the best way to mic a guitar amp for front of house use here at CCU. All right, so miking a guitar amplifier. Here we have a early like Marshall solid state. It's actually Jonathan Demisi's. I stole it for just a minute. Don't tell him I took it. Anyways, um, so this is pretty st standard guitar amplifier combo to 112. I think it's like maybe 20 or 30 watts. Awesome for what we're doing here. We actually like to keep these bad boys isolated so we don't get a ton of stage noise, which is um, great for the front of house dudes. The, the drums are loud enough, so we don't want to add anything else with floor wedges or guitar amps or anything like that. So we'll actually put these guys behind the curtain and mic them up back there. As far as mics, we will use the SM57 or what I have here, a 58 with the windscreen taken off of it. Um, one little trick that I like to use is pulling out my handy dandy iPhone and turning on the flashlight. And you're actually able, if you guys come up here and take a look at this, if you put this on the grill cloth, you're able to see through the grill cloth to the speaker cone. So that's important because where you place this mic on the speaker cone has everything to do with the sound that you're gonna get front of house. So if you think of the speaker cone right here, if this is direct center on the speaker cone and then you have the edge of the speaker cone over here, you can kind of think of that almost as like a tone knob depending on where you put the mic. If it's towards the outside of the speaker and anywhere on the diameter of it, it's on the outside, you'll get a, a much woofier, um, more like low mid sound. If you put it directly in the center, it's that like ice pick treble sound. Um, so I usually start a half and half, right way, right, right in the middle. Um, and if they're way trebly, I'll move it out. If they're way dark, I'll move it towards the center a little bit. Um, What's better to do than that, though, is actually to talk to the guitar player. I know that's a crazy idea, but um, it's possible that he is having trouble. Like, they don't hear the whole mix like we do front of house, if you know what I mean. They hear what's in their ears and whatnot, but they don't hear the way that you're mixing them front of house. So it's possible that they're a little too trebly, um, you know, when you're looking at the whole sonic uh, structure of a band. Um, if that's the case, it's okay to talk to him and say, hey man, your guitar's a little too bright, could you back it down a little bit? Instead of trying to make up with it, with uh, make up for it with equalization or 
placement of mics or anything like that. So the other thing we can talk about is whether it's on axis, like so, meaning it's directly facing the amp, or if it's off axis, being slightly adjusted. I personally prefer on axis. I think it gives a much more consistent sound, especially when moving it. Um, it is possible to achieve some nice like blended between like picking up a bit of the woofiness of the outside and the trebliness of the inside of the speaker by going off center like this. As far as the closeness, I like to keep it around an inch off of there. Um, it's possible to achieve some cool like special sounds pulling it off some, but you definitely don't want to be more than about four inches or so off the front of it. As far as equalization goes, you can do a high pass at about 80 hertz with, uh, with one of these guys. And a lot of people don't understand that a guitar amp is just this speaker. It's just a woofer if you think about it. There's no tweeter to produce high end. So this amp technically is not even capable of producing frequencies above 4,000 hertz. Now, due to like harmonics and what happens, you know, just with physics, there are frequencies above that that come out. But usually when they do, they don't sound super great. So another trick that I use is to put a high cut um, filter that is all frequencies all the way down to about 4,000 hertz, or sometimes even lower. And I'll just adjust that to kind of cut the top off of, of the guitar sound where it could be a little harsh and, and crowd up the top into your mix and, and maybe even hurt people's ears in the audience. So the main things to remember here are the further outside you go on the speaker, the woofier it gets. The further inside you go, the more trebly it gets. Don't be afraid to talk to the guitar players. I mean, they want to have awesome tone and you're going to help them out with that. And then, uh, Usually you want to keep it within about four inches from the guitar uh, grill here. Otherwise things start getting a little weird. So I hope this is of help to you. Uh, we've had fun taking a couple minutes to explain how to mic drum sets and guitar amplifiers here today. As always, if you guys have any questions about what we talked about, feel free to drop me a line at tanner.daniels at ccuniversity.edu. Have an awesome day.